Hello. Good morning. How's everyone doing? What's up? Good morning. Hello. I messed up the Facebook thing today. I posted the Facebook on the John Boy and Jake Radio Facebook channel by accident and not the John Boy Media channel. So then I had to try to audible and go in there and share it from the John Boy from the John Boy Media channel on the John Boy and Jake channel. As many of you know, Facebook kind of is crazy. Katie's in here. She says, just to let you know, you messed up. I did. Anyway, morning, everyone else in the YouTube chat. We got Norm. We got Josh. Don't forget the intro. Welcome to the morning show. It's bite-sized bits of everything that I like. Some music, some towns, some books, some baseball, some rabbit holes. High school nicknames, I guess, is on the list now. Morning to Steve, Benjamin, Vinny, Dudulaney, Dudulaney, Kyle, Kevin, Jill, how are you? BVD, Z for Zach, Dylan, Morgan. How's everyone doing? Um, my name's Jimmy. And now we can start the show. Uh, I'm doing well. Ran around a little crazy this morning, so I'm late, so I'll try to. Go quick, I guess. Not get too many down, too many rabbit holes. No, Katie, you weren't you weren't rude about it. Um, Katie, now in the Facebook chat, apologized. It was it was nice of you to point it out. You weren't rude. Um, sorry if I made you feel rude. You weren't. Uh, all right. So it says book there. I audible at the last second because I don't have a lot of books down here at my parents' house down the shore. It's really nice out. Slept good. Feel good. Everything's going good. Excited to get back to the office and do baseball stuff. And I saw Norm's name. So I really want to see how his Braves did yesterday. Because I think I fell asleep. They were doing well. Last I checked, Freddie Freeman got a home run. Huge for me. Yeah, they crushed him. Okay. Braves crushed him. How about that? All right. The, uh, oh. It's happy belated birthday to Vinny. Vinny, happy birthday in the YouTube chat. It's my parents' uh, wedding anniversary today. 30-something years. Let me see. 36 years. How about that? It's crazy. Good job by them. Anyone else deserve any claps before we get going? I'm feeling healthier. And I spilled coffee all morning, so take him back. You and Higgy both got robbed hard last night. Yeah, Higgy, Higgy, Higgy. Thought we had that home run. Jake tried to act like it was a crazy call. Almost got it. Blitz and Trapper was the name of the band. All right, so Anthony, uh, uh, producer Anthony, helps out with the research on morning. And I was sitting down with him last week, two weeks ago. Oh, Saad Subzarwi. Subzarwi? Subzarwi? Subzarwi. Subzarwi. Got a job. So congratulations uh, on that. That's awesome. What the fuck was I saying? Oh, Ant helped me out. And so we did. A, so we got to it. And I was going over how I usually get research and find little quotes from this. 
And we went, we, the random town of the day on the sheet was Horse Heaven, Oregon. Now, I told Ant, I could have swore that we have talked about Horse Haven, Oregon before. And we went through all the old episodes. We have a list of all the old episodes. It's pretty organized. And I tried to find when did we talk about Horse Heaven. Now, it was never the main town. So I was like, well, maybe we were just exploring a town in Oregon. And we went past Horse Heaven on the Google Maps. And then I was like, what's this about? And we couldn't find it. So I don't know. If I've done this on my own time or a previous episode, but Horse Heaven, Oregon is the town of the day today. And in Horse Heaven, it's 63 degrees and sunny. I don't know if that's the preferred weather of a horse. You know, I don't know if if you live in Wisconsin and on a horse farm and then you check the weather and you're like, oh, man, this weather is heaven for a horse. I don't know if that's 63 degrees and sunny. Um, I don't know. But horse heaven, and it's Washington. I don't know why I put Oregon on the sheet. So now we're all confused. Where am I? Let me check. Okay, hold on. The weather that I have is for horse heaven, Washington. The horse heaven on the sheet is Oregon, unless I wrote that wrong. Now... Hold horse heaven, Oregon. That's the one we're talking about. Now there's a horse heaven, Washington as well. That we're not talking about that one. So hold on. We got to, let's check the weather. We've made a grave mistake. The weather, the weather in, in horse heaven, Oregon. Hold on. Let's see if I can fix this on the fly. We can't, this can't happen, you know? Can't be tricking all of the people that are tuning in in Horse Heaven, Oregon, and they want the weather, and we're giving them the wrong weather. You know, it's just a total botch job. Okay, the weather in Horse Heaven, one word. Interesting tidbit. In Oregon, horse heaven's one word. In Washington, horse heaven is two different words. In Oregon, it's 52 degrees, partly cloudy. Now, is that better for a horse, or did they prefer the Washington? Uh, Maybe there's two horses, one in each, and they're communicating. So, uh, talking about the weather. Anyway, uh, Wake and Jake, John Boy and Jake Radio, uh, talking Giants, talking baseball, and mansplain baseball elsewhere. Probably excited about the Braves clinching. Uh... Those are the new episodes out today. Horse Heaven, Oregon. Let's get into it. Let's talk about it. Uh, Let me check the chat real quick because I want to see if you guys remember me talking about that. Uh, um, Did he get it confused with Horse Island? Interesting. Interesting. Well, no, because, all right, so Horse Heaven, Oregon, is a ghost town, and the name for the settlement stemmed from herds of horses that thrived on the local grasses and drank from unfenced springs. So it was a very literal name. Oh, that's heaven for horses over there. A bunch of wild horses. The Spanish brought them in. There was no horses native to the American uh, United States land. Uh, They all came over, which is a wild thought. Anyway, then cinnabar, a toxic mercury sulfide mineral with a chemical composition of HGS, was discovered in the area in 1933 and production began in 1934. That all rings a bell to me, as if it's something we've talked about before, and I can't remember if we actually did that on the show. Do I want an English muffin or a bagel? Asked Josh. Don't forget the intro, Osborne. Josh, I don't know where you're from. If you can get a fresh bagel... It is 9.20, so we're a little late for fresh bagels if you're on the East Coast in New Jersey and New York, New York, Connecticut, the tri-state area. I still think you go for it. Now, English muffin, if you're getting a bagel from your own house, English muffins always play. But English muffins are risky because it feels like I can't just eat one. You know, it's kind of like a cookie in a box. I'm going to have multiple English muffins. And then how many is too many? And I think it's more than one. But you do you. Keep us updated on on that uh so they found cinnamon cinnamon they found cinnabar 
in this town, Horsehaven, Oregon. So then they started mining and all that in 1934. Two years later, Horsehaven Mines, a subsidiary for Sun Oil, took over and continued mining until 1944. So we're going a good decade of this being a mining town. And then a fire destroyed the ore processing furnace, the power plant, and other structures. The mine closed in 1945, but reopened in 1955. So we're going 10 years on, 10 years off. Now in 55, it's opened with a new furnace, uh, but much of the mine collapsed between then and 1958 when the mine closed again. So it only lasted another three years after that. Let's go look at where we are in the world, Horse Heaven, Oregon. And, and then there's a video of the abandoned mine that I'm going to check out because that seems cool. It's north of Bend, Oregon, south of Fossil. There it is. So how how far away do you think Horse Heaven, Washington is? Now we're not even going to get any ta- any houses or anything, right? Cuz ghost town. Just one road. Yeah. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Say it again. It's kind of crazy. What's this? Remnants of something? Are there pictures of when it was a town? Okay, we have too many things I want to do. Not enough time because I started late. First off, directions to Horse Heaven, Washington. How far apart are the two Horse Heavens? Four-hour drive, 194 miles. Okay, done with that. Next thing, um, Horse Heaven, Oregon, 19, you know, let's just say 38 images. When it was prospering. Eh. I think the word prosper means different things at different times. There's just like a one shack it's showing us. Here's the abandoned abandoned horse heaven mercury mine. The short version. Okay. Oh, horse heaven. We got a nice graphic. YouTube account, Mines of the West. Check them out. 14,000 subscribers if you're into Mines of the West. A lot of lens flares stuff going on. A lot of effects. I just kind of want to see. Not in it for the effects, guys. I'm in it for just the video of the abandoned mine. Okay. So this looks like a crate over a hole. And now we're back to some salvage wood heap. All the scrap wood just laying around. All right. Some machinery. Some oil stuff and pipe. Okay. What's down there? I was expecting. Okay. Well. That was boring. I hate to crap on it, but I expected a lot more of, out of the abandoned Torch Heaven Mercury Mine short version video. We didn't get it, though, and that's fine. We've learned there's two different Horse Heavens. We don't know which ones the horses prefer. There's a fire. Nothing in this town. Ghost town, literally nothing there. I don't think anything happens. So, horse heaven. So, does the horse heaven football team call their Hail Mary play heaven sent? Wow. Wow. Maybe. Dylan Brower says that he was expecting more from horse heaven, as was I. I also think I've already talked about it that I can't remember talking about it. Morning. Taylor Ivey in Facebook says, You think the Strohs have any chance at the playoffs this year? Well, they're going to make it. Um, They're going to make the playoffs. Unless, what did did Seattle win yesterday to make it all scary? Only two games back, or did they beat Seattle last night? Um, Astros Mariners Astros won yeah they're in the playoffs Uh, do I think they'll go far no they don't have any pitching they have some pitching whatever 
Okay. I'm over horse heaven. We're moving on to our player of the day, Larry Gura. Larry Gura. Is that how you pronounce it? Larry Gura is a pitcher. Pitched for the Cubs, the Yankees, the Royals. In 1980, he was an all-star, and he's in the Royals Hall of Fame. And I don't know if I'm saying his name right. He won in double... Gora won in double figures for seven consecutive seasons for the Royals. That's pretty cool. 1978 through 1984. Oh, double figures. So like just 10. He compiled 99 wins over that span. Pestered his former team, the Yankees. After leaving the Yankees, he went 11 and six in the regular season as a Royal. Gura was three and zero against them, against the Yankees in 1979 and 1980 with five complete games. Ooh, that is a real big pass, and tossed another complete game victory against the Yankees in 1980 American League Championship Series. Ten. A lot of complete games. Gura was the Royals relief pitcher for games two and five of the 1980 World Series. He was an exceptional fielding pitcher, committing only seven errors and 483 total chances for a career 987 fielding percentage. Fielding percentage, kind of funny thing. Um, all right, let's take a look at his great notes by producer Ant there. Got everything. Tormented his old team. How about that? What's his his real name is Lawrence Cyril 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 Cyrus Cyril Gura. I had to get to Cyrus. He's from Joliet, Illinois. Sup, Joliet? Nice rose. Is Joliet have the rose on their water tower? Or is that someone else? Another town, Illinois. Went to Arizona State. Went to East High School. Joliet. So why did he leave the Yankees? I want to see. Did they trade him away? Drafted by the Cubs in the second round. And then the Cubs sent him to the Rangers to complete an earlier deal. Uh, then the Rangers traded him with cash to the Yankees for Duke Sims. So what a great name that is. Duke Sims. Duke Sims. Fantastic name, Duke Sims. Full name, Dwayne Sims. Go by Duke. It's a great call. It's a great call by Dwayne there. Uh, Then the Yankees traded him to the Kansas City Royals for Fran Healy. And he he spent two years, a year and a half with the Royals. Then he signed with the Royals um, and spent like seven years with the Royals. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yanks traded him, and then he tormented him. Gotta love that. Most similar pitchers, Ross Grimsley, Bill Lee, Bud Black, Dick Donovan, Tom Browning, Preacher Rowe, Jake and I have been really into early settler names, early settler names. Bud Black might be an early settler name. Tom Browning is. Tom Browning's such an early settler name. That's a good one. John Tudor, that's an early settler name. All right. Uh, We have highlights of this dude pitching in the 1980 World Series. You guys want to check those out? He was a relief pitcher for the Royals. And I'm guessing this is him on the mound. Lefty. Inducing... The fly ball home run. So he gave up a home run. Look at that cheering crew. Cheering crew is nothing but... I mean, the average age of that crew that they just went to is probably 75. Well, you got to remember, in the 80s, everyone made themselves look way older than they actually were fashion-wise. So maybe the average age is like 55. They just dress like... Old women. The perm, the big glasses. It was the look. Everyone had it. Uh, where's our dude? All of a sudden, it was a tie ball game. The two teams started over. It was two to two. It was Still two to two. Still in the two. sixth inning, UL Washington at the plate. He sends a fly ball to left field. Clint Hurdle was on third base. It was deep enough as Lazinski made the catch, but Curdle easily scored from third. Curdle. Gave the Royals Clint Hurdle. First lead of the ball game. It was three to two. But in the ninth inning, Del Unser laces one down the right field. Mike Schmidt was on first base, and he was off to the races. He rounded second, went to third. The throw 
coming in from right field, not in time as Schmidt came across with the tying run, and it was 3-3, three to three, but it wasn't over. Manny Trio at the plate, Unser on third, Trio laces one off Cuisenberry. That brings the run in as Brett's throw was too late, and the Phillies took the lead 4-3. to three. But it wasn't over yet. Ninth inning, Kansas City loads the bases. Jose Cardinal at the plate, Tim McGraw. Two-strike pitch, strike three, struck him out. The Phillies come from behind to win it 4-3. to three. They now lead the series three games to two. Game six in Philadelphia. Kansas City loads the bases. A lot Jose happened. Cardinal at the plate, Tim McGraw. A lot happened there. I, I don't even know where our dude Larry Gura was. Um... But go Phillies. I mean, Schmidt, Mike, what run? And why do you call Tug McGraw Tig, Tim McGraw? That's his son's name. Was he not even, we didn't even know that was his son at this point. The bases. Jose Cardinal at the plate, Tim McGraw, two strike pitch. Isn't that Tug McGraw? Tim McGraw's dad, but they didn't really know his dad. And Tug McGraw's real name isn't Tim, it's Frank. Was that just a slip up where he called Tug Tim? And but it wasn't over yet. Ninth inning, Kansas City loads the bases. Jose Cardinal at the plate, Tim McGraw. Definitely says Tim McGraw, but that's Tug McGraw, who is Tim McGraw's dad. But they didn't know that at the time. Um what is this? Nineteen eighty? What am I looking at? What have I clicked? Yeah, okay. That's Tug McGraw. Just a slip up. That announcer did sound like he was calling a horse race, Rob. It did. It's a great call. Anyway, they called him Tim McGraw, and I was confusing because it's his son's name, but his name is Tug McGraw. He also called uh, Clint Hurdle Curdle at one point, which is kind of cool. Kind of cool. Maybe that was maybe that was this announcer's way of letting you know, like, hey, dude, you have a son. His name's Tim McGraw. Why don't you, why don't you go say hi to him? You know, we're calling him out, <clears throat> Wordle. Um, anything else we need to know about Larry Gura? Reminds me of Larry Gaga. Classic Nick Schwartzman skit from his bad show that Jake and I like. No, Gary Gaga. <laughs> and <coughs> Larry Gora, Gary Gaga. Um, let's go versus Hall of Famers and see who lit him up. Batter status, Hall of Famer. Who we got? Who we got? Who we got? Yount had good numbers off of him. Six home runs and, and 75 appearances. Eddie Murray, five home runs, 403 on base percentage. Okay, who did he strike out the most? Ooh, our dude, Larry Gora, crushed Reggie Jackson. Maybe it's because Reggie Jackson was a Yankee. 42 plate appearances, Reggie Jackson had a 167 batting average, a 286 on base percentage, a 333 slugging, a 619 OPS. Get him, Gora. Crushed Reggie Jackson from 1976 to 1984. He never got a double off of him, nor a triple. Two home runs. And one, the first home run came in 1976 in their first ever appearance. Reggie got him right away. And he never forgot. And he made it a point from that time moving forward to take Reggie Jackson seriously. And that he did. Holding him to only one more home run in the next 41 plate appearances between the two of them. Gary Gaga, Larry Gora. Good job by him. Also, okay, let's see. What are we saying in the chat? I didn't know that Tim's dad played baseball. 
Oh, the story between Tim McGraw and Tug McGraw is funny. I did, <laughs> Elliot says, do a breakdown in that voice. There was a breakdown that I started in a fake voice like that, and and no one understood what was happening. There's a, no one got it at all. Like, who was that at the beginning? Why is someone else doing it? You imposter. Get your own thing. Um, I forget which breakdown it was. I did that. Uh, the story between Tim McGraw and Tug, Tug McGraw is, is very interesting. Um, Tug didn't know he had a son, or he did maybe knew that there was a chance he had a son somewhere. I think it was um, a one-night stand. And Tim McGraw grew up with a picture of Tug McGraw, like a poster of him on his wall, who's his favorite baseball player. But he didn't know that that was his dad. But his mom knew that that was his dad. And then they met, you know, when Tim McGraw was an adult, he found out that Tug was his dad. He was his favorite baseball player growing up. And I think they mended the relationship and they have a good relationship. But it's a crazy story. I probably don't have it all correct, but it's there. Um. Oh, shit. It's 937. We haven't even started the book. Good call, Vinny. All right. Well, dude, the book today is just a quick thing because um, Ace sent me a, a package. It was very nice of him. And um, he sent me this book and some baseballs and some a shirt, the Independent Carolina Baseball League. And he sent me a nice note all about this league and that his great-grandfather started it. Um, I wonder if Ace wrote this book. Hey, so are you Scott Verner? Um, I wish I had the note on me. Ah, it's in the bedroom. Because it was cool. It says, you know, this was like a textile mill league, and each each town had it. And But, you know, players were playing for pride, and they would bounce around. And the – oh, here's a note in here. These two guys are Henry, my great-grandfather, and his nephew, Albert. So that's his great grandfather in the book right here. There's some history about them in a little town. Where the hell to start? So the town is the ace who sent this to me. His hometown, Valdez, and in the note, and the part I want to read about is Valdez had a population of one thousand, and I believe they played Charleston or some big city that had a population of like seventy thousand, and they played against them in this league, and it was you know guys from the the town and the league. And then they beat them in the semi championship or the quarterfinals. So I'm excited to read about this American history, small towns, baseball, kind of everything I like wrapped into one. Um, and it seems easy enough to flip through Look at this guy, Carl Werner. Oh, well, badass. He looks, like a prohibition dude or maybe our eyes have just trained those those clothes in our brain to think of them as prohibition guys but uh yeah so thank you very much ace i'll get back to you i think i don't know if I, uh, you left an email but very appreciative very nice of you and this is small town america towns forming mills town forming and then an independent baseball league gets made as entertainment for guys working the mills um, who play baseball. So it is kind of everything I like wrapped into one. So I'm excited to check it out. So that's the book today. The Independent Carolina Baseball League. Bam. I think I think I got me a, a shirt, another uh, tour shirt too. So I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, let, I bought North Carolina is the best. I feel left out. Let the COB send you stuff. Oh, we're trying to work on the post, the, well, the PO box. Once we get the PO box set up, we have all the paperwork. We just got to go over there and do it. But now the office is quarantined. Um, Ace went through bill. Bill, behind the scenes, Bill. But behind the scenes, Bill's on vacation with his fiance right now. So 
He's not going to be able to help you. We have a whole class about coal mining at my school, and I really wanted to take it. That's kind of cool. All right. I got to let Jake do uh, Wake and Jake, and then we're doing John Boy and Jake Radio later on today. And then oh, today's a full day. We're doing that. And then we have the Talking Baseball pregame show. And then we're recording the Talking Baseball voicemail episode. And then we're recording Sharp Stats. And then we're recording the Talking Yanks um, pregame show. Today's like a six episode day. Plus, I got to try and make some breakdowns. So today's a crazy day. Thank you guys for hanging out with me for a little bit. I'll be back tomorrow. And that's everything. You guys are the best. Uh, where's that Blitz and Trapper song? Sorry, Jake and BBD for keeping you waiting. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Bye.